reading from Jeremiah chapter 15, verses 15 to 21. Jeremiah 15, 15 to 21. Then I said, Lord, you know what's happening to me. Please step in and help me. Punish my persecutors. Please give me time. Don't let me die young. It's for your sake that I'm suffering. When I discovered your words, I devoured them. They are my joy and my heart's delight, for I bear your name. O Lord God of heaven's armies, I never joined the people in their merry feasts. I sat alone because your hand was on me. I was filled with indignation at their sins. Why then does my suffering continue? Why is my wound so incurable? Your help seems as uncertain as a seasonal brook, like a spring that has gone dry. This is how the Lord responds. If you return to me, I will restore you so you can continue to serve me. If you speak good words rather than worthless ones, you will be my spokesman. You must influence them. Don't let them influence you. They will fight against you like an attacking army, but I will make you as secure as a fortified wall of bronze. They will not conquer you. For I am with you to protect you and rescue you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Yes, I will certainly keep you safe from these wicked men. I will rescue you from their cruel hands. This is the word of the Lord. Cheryl read the text already. I'm going to read it for us again. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints of light. I get hung up on verses every once in a while. They'll stick with me for two or three months. And that's one I just go over and over in my own heart. That God will make me strong. It's full of promise. Not only to make, make us strong, but that we'll endure with patience, everything, and at the same time not become grouchy or discouraged. It will become, we will endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to God because of this wonderful hope that He has enabled us, given us a share in the inheritance of the saints and the like. Jeremiah was a very young man when he was called by God to be a prophet. He was the son of a priest, member of the priestly class in Israel, so he was being trained. It doesn't say this in the Bible, but tradition says he was 15 years old when, the, when, the Bible, when the God added to his role as a priest a priest in training, God called him to be a prophet. That means God's going to talk to him in ways more oral, more audible than most of us here. A special gift, a calling from God, so accurate would be the messages that he received from God 
that he would write them down and they became part of the Bible. He trusted God from his youth. He trusted God. He, he loved God's word. He loved God and he relied on God for direction and deliverance day by day. Now you think a young fellow like that would live a charmed life, wouldn't you? I'm not sure where, where the idea came from, but it's, it's within my psyche, deep, that if I'm good, everything will go good. But, but I was being real good back in California many years ago. Just the sweetest fellow you could ever want to meet. And I borrowed my mother-in-law's car, and when I opened the door, somebody ran into it. And I remember the first feeling I had was, Lord, I've been good, why did that have to happen? You know? I hope you're smarter than I am. Both things like that. While it is true that obeying God's law and living according to God's will is the best we understand, it makes life better. We, we, we avert an awful lot of pain and confusion and worthless feelings if we, as we do God's will. But that does not mean the world will teach us well. It does not mean if we're living really well, we won't get sick. We won't have flat tires or whatever other aggravations come. You know these things. This young fellow experienced sorrow upon sorrow, so much that there's a word called, you perhaps heard of Jeremiah. If you, if you write something really sad and depressing, it's a Jeremiah. It's named after him because he had sorrow upon sorrow. And this passage that I read this morning, he had gotten so discouraged that his faith faltered and he wanted to quit. As I watched the news this week and saw the evacuation of Galveston Island in, off Texas, I got thinking about sorrow upon sorrow. For the people being loaded onto buses, the particular part I saw, they were old people, like me, and some of them older, in wheelchairs. And one lady that caught my attention, they were loading her on a bus, she was in a wheelchair, she had oxygen tank. Uh, it just seemed like that poor woman, she, she can't walk anymore. She's got oxygen because she's having trouble breathing. Well, isn't that enough? Now her home gets destroyed and she's got to be shipped off some other place. Sorrow upon sorrow. And I just had to stop and pray for all those people going through. Sometimes it seems like pain is unbearable. When you try to do your best and sorrows become mountain high, faith falters, pain is unbearable. What happens next? This prayer is what happened for Jeremiah. He says, Lord, you know what's happening to me. It isn't like it's hidden. I don't know why I even have to tell you. You know what's going on. Please, step in and help me. He had been preaching the Word of God and he knew the people weren't going to like it. He was preaching that the awful suffering that Israel was going through was the judgment of God. And he was telling Israel that they were going into exile for their wickedness. And their only hope was to repent and make their hearts right with God. At the same time he was preaching, there were some more popular preachers, the health and wealth gospel preachers. That if you have enough faith, everything is possible. You can manipulate God. Whatever you want, God will give you if you have enough faith. 
And they were preaching, we have this summary of their sermon, all is well, no famine or war will come, the Lord will surely send you peace. As a result, the people hated Jeremiah. He was a true and faithful pastor among them, but they hated him and they cursed him. One time they threw him in a well. He had to be rescued <clears throat> from being thrown in a well. He was thrown in prison. He was rejected and abused in so many ways. He was in danger of dying young, suffering abuse for being faithful to God and faithful to God's people. Lord, you know what's happening to me, he says. Please step in and help me. I have tried to do my best for you. I've tried. I love your word, he said. Now, he wouldn't have nearly the amount of Bible that we got. He'd have Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And he loved that. He took with the word of God that he had. And God speaking to him as well would be God's words. And he said, they are my joy and my delight. I devour them. I don't just read them and drop them aside. They're my food, food for my soul. I devour them. And, and I haven't joined these parties. I haven't become silly following the party crowd. These are people who love you. These are, these are young people going to these wild parties and I didn't go so they didn't like that. They isolated me and your hand was upon me, setting me aside. It's kind of weird. When I saw the sin of your people, people who knew better, we're not talking mistakes here, people who knew better, choosing to do what they knew was wrong, I became angry and upset. They seemed to be committed to sin. So God, why does my suffering continue? Obeying you, I thought things would get better. I thought I'd have a life of joy and abundance. But I'm afflicted with a cancer in my spirit, an incurable wound, and the pain is continuous. And then he says an awful thing. Your help, talking to God, your help is as uncertain as a seasonal brook, like a spring that has gone dry. These are hard words from a hurting heart. Well, he heard from God more than most of us do because he was a prophet. And God answered him. And this is what God said. You take back what you just said. Take back that remark about my help being uncertain. If you take that back, I'll take you back. And we'll be restored in our relationship and we'll get things going right. You speak good. Speak good, true words. Speak them to the people. Pray good words when you're speaking to me. And you are out there to change the people. That's why I put you there. You are to take my word to the people and keep preaching it, no matter what, and you let your words change the people. Don't let the people change you. You're in a war. The powers of darkness are true powers, awful powers. They oppose the truth. Darkness wants to extinguish the light. It's like an evil army planned with organized attacks against you. 
but I'm with you and I will make you like a fortified bronze wall. They will attack you, but they will not defeat you. The gates of hell will not prevail against you. If you will speak the words that I give you to speak, both to me and to them, I will keep you safe and I will rescue you. As far as I can see, reading the rest of the book of Jeremiah, he continued this kind of suffering until he died. Now he had great moments of refreshing and renewal. In the book of Lamentations, which Jeremiah also wrote, right in almost the exact center of it, he says this, Great is thy faithfulness. Thy mercies are new every morning. And if you read the whole book of Lamentations and the list of terrible sufferings that Israel went through and Jeremiah went through, uh, you will be thrilled that he could still believe that God's mercies were due, were new every morning. He had moments of refreshing and renewal throughout his life, but he did not have that kind of joyful, hopeful life we would all like to have. In the New Testament, the equivalent to Jeremiah might, might be the Apostle Paul. Paul was also embattled. He also had the Word of God to be shared with people who did not want to receive it. He spoke to Israel and was rejected over and over again. He spoke to many different nations as he traveled around. He ends up in Rome in jail for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. For himself and for you and me and for, I'm going to take it backwards in history, for good old Jeremiah. Paul made this wonderful prayer. You've heard it twice, you can hear it again. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. We, if, if we had to suffer as much as Jeremiah, if we knew that we were going to have to die rather than have a happy life in answer to our prayers, we still have great triumph because of this phrase at the end of the prayer, we share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, but if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Saints who suffer the loss of all things, even minors, have this promise from Jesus. And Paul, considering the pains and sorrows of his own life, said, I consider that our present sufferings are not worthy to be compared with the glory that will be revealed in us. Hallelujah. We have such a blessed hope that in the bleakest, blackest moments of our life, a light shines. Jeremiah prayed, though he was in the pit of despair, do it. Pray in the most frightening, oppressive moments. Earnest prayer brings light to your darkest hours. 
your problems probably will not disappear. They might. People have many miracles. But for sure, God will make you strong. And God will rescue you. Keep on smiling. Keep on believing. The best is yet to come.